Bonjour everyone, welcome to another live stream edition of Cafe de Rene. James here, joined once again by Star Show, Mr. Rene Dupree. Rene, you brought a new guest to the show, a new friend to the show today. Yes, a new guest. See, I'm going to try to help out my fellow Canadians. I'm trying to give some exposure to all my fellow Canadians. And I got to turn off the... Yeah, turn off that, okay. So, today I have a very lovely guest. She is 32 years old. She's from Laval, Quebec. She's been wrestling for five years. Yeah. She's the ever-talented Melanie Havoc. Bonjour, Melanie. Comment ça va? Hi. Yeah. Talk a little French for us, would you? Et moi, je me présente. Je suis Mélanie. Euh, je lutte depuis cinq ans. Euh, je l'ai appris dans deux écoles différentes. Euh, mais récemment, j'ai appris avec euh, Shane Hawk, euh, Speedball Mike Bailey et Matt Lee. And uh, I'm still going on uh, around uh, Québec. Uh, and, uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. So what she just said was that she was trained by Speedball Mike Bailey, right? Yeah. yeah so he's, he's very well known. Uh, I think he's James. Help me out here. He's with TNA currently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. To be fair, he's getting yeah. a lot of uh, promotion and uh, a lot of praise. He's I, he's very talented. Yeah, I've known him for a few years. But back to you, Melanie. So, what prompted you to get into the wrestling business? Have you always been a fan? Yes. Uh, oh, well, crazy. I was watching. Uh, <laughs> I was watching wrestling with my dad when I was like four or five years old. Okay. So, yeah, at the same moment, like, um, I saw, like, some women doing it. So I was like, that's that's what I want to do. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just my dream, like, yeah, forever. So I, yeah. I just, like, I went all in and I did it. Yeah. So where have you been outside of Quebec? Like, have you been to the United States or anywhere no. else? No, yeah. I, I've been outside of Quebec, like maybe in the Ontario region, yeah. but that's it. That's uh, it. I've been to uh, Nova Scotia once, and that's it, yeah. That's it. Well, hopefully there's a lot of promoters that watch this show, and uh, we'd like to get you an opportunity to travel the world. Um, I wish. Let's talk about... Um, what's it like for a Canadian independent wrestler? Because it's, you know, it's very difficult for us. You know, if you go over to the UK, there's, there's a lot of work, you know, they can travel within Europe very easily. And then of course, if you're in Japan, yeah. there's a tremendous amount of work and the United States, well, that is the land of opportunity, but for us Canadians, it's very difficult. So explain, you know, the trials and tribulations of, of an independent wrestler in Canada. Um, it doesn't pay much. You do a lot of travel. <laughs> you do a lot of travel. Uh, you do like bunch of shows everywhere. Uh, it doesn't pay much. Uh, you don't. You don't really uh, go out there. Like there is not like a chance that maybe if you stay in Canada that you will eventually get signed anywhere. So you have to uh, go out. You have to go wrestle in the States. And wrestling in the States, well, uh, it's uh, sketchy. So if you get caught, like, working for somebody in the States, uh, you, get, you can get banned, you know? So I'm trying to not really do it because I'm scared of that. But um, the, at the same time, we don't have a choice. Like, we have to get out there and the best place we have to go with the states because it's closer to Canada, but it's yeah. sketchy. So yeah. yeah, it's very sketchy. There's been a lot of uh, instances where Canadian wrestlers were just trying to get some experience, but yet you yeah. know they got caught and then banned for like we had Silesia Sparks on here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like she was making a fortune; she was barely getting no, money, maybe making gas money, right? But yeah. So, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of I like for something maybe something to happen in Canada where you know Canadians could get a and it used to be like that. That's the thing, you know. It, my dad used to have a promotion back in the seventies and eighties, and you know he would wrestle six uh, seven nights a week, and then he would start in April, go all the way to September, seven nights a week at his own television show. Then there was like wow. five or six different territories, especially Quebec. Where you can wow. make a full time living doing this, you know, and you know what, it, it should be like that again. So maybe, maybe somebody I don't know, maybe me, maybe I should fucking put something together and 
get the mm-hmm. Canadians. There's so much talent. Would you agree? There's so much talent here in yeah. Canada. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. really crazy. We are so much doing this right now, and there's a lot of people, new people coming in, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, what's your ultimately like? What's your goal? Is it to be on TV or just make a living with wrestling or BWWE or AEW? Well, mean? when I first started, I'm not going to lie. I wanted to uh, get signed, you know, by NXT. I had big goals. Um, but, you know, after five years, I just uh, I just had like, you know, a slap in the face. And, and I don't think it's going to happen. But for my my goal, yeah, of course, it's just make a living out of wrestling but my buddy doesn't agree with that <laughs> so for now i don't i don't have goals i'm just like doing what i can doing what you can oh your buddy as in who's your buddy yeah. your boyfriend no i'm sorry my buddy it's uh, my my buddy oh your body oh. <laughs> i'm sorry it's my accent <laughs> <laughs> we got a question for you um let's bring it up Looking good, Renee. Looking real good. Hey, Milani, how was IWS? Did you enjoy your time there? Well, I I wrestle all the time at IWS, and it's my family, so I always enjoy uh, wrestling there. Um, yeah. I like seeing new talents making their debuts. It's mm-hmm. amazing, and it's the crowd. It's always a big crowd, and it's a it's a show that goes like of the goes live on the trailer tv like was fight fight tv before and so it's a it's a good exposure you know so uh always so iws stands for international wrestling syndicate is that it yes yes yes, yeah and that's based out of montreal and they Mm -hmm. usually have shows is it monthly or by by it's monthly monthly, like maybe sometimes once or two months right but yeah not, not really monthly but once two months yeah Right. And then they're featured on Fight TV. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So we can see you on there? Yes, of course. Of course. So there we go. Um, if there's any promoters watching, I want to use this channel to help out my fellow Canadians, get exposure, mm-hmm. and try to get work because there's so much talent in this country. And oftentimes they're overlooked because we don't get a lot of exposure here. So you know what? I'm going to give back and uh, try to help out my fellow Canadians get some exposure. So, um, as you know, wrestling is very physical. What's the, have you suffered any major injuries thus far in your career? Nothing major, like just little injuries. Mm. Um, but I feel like uh, I'm made of paper <laughs> <laughs> because I've been doing this for only five years and I know that I don't have much left because I'm thinking about my future. You know, I, I want to have some quality of life in my yeah. future. Yeah. And right now my, my back is killing me, my neck is killing me, and now I have an injury to my knee. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to do mm. it like maybe a year and after I'm going to see really well you say yeah. that now yeah I, I said that i was gonna quit 10 years ago you uh, know yeah yeah it d- doesn't work that way sweetheart no. you know, you know. once you got once you got that bug you got the disease that's it you can't let it yeah, go i really have the disease it's over yeah. so when you were growing up who was your biggest inspiration like who your inspirations mm-hmm. Well, if you look at me, um, maybe you can like guess, but my biggest inspiration was Lita, like growing up, of course. Oh, really? And Kane and Undertaker. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hold on a second. Were you watching me on TV? Were you watching yes, that? Of course. Yeah. Very. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So. You say that you only have a year left, but we know you're lying. You're going to be in it forever. You can't give this up. Okay, maybe I'm going to take a break and come back. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's usually how it works. But, uh, mm. yeah, so, I mean, you're willing to do anything. I mean, you're willing to go travel Europe. You're willing to go travel the States. I mean, you're really, if there's promoters out there wanting to book you, you're you're ready to go, right? I, well, I have a work. You know, I have a job, so it depends. 
right. depends all along but if i go for a week yes it's cool okay. like i don't mind okay got another question for you thoughts on your match at iws oh with the is that game changer wrestling show yeah. yeah okay any dream opponent yeah how was your match the last one um or the one last year i don't i'm not sure about the question because we had one I, maybe it was last year because last year we did that show against a uh, game changer and i had a match against uh, ali cats um whew, that was the hardest hardest match of my life don't but um if that was the question um that match, that match was really hard uh, to do because uh, it's a lot of pressure. So, you know, it's like I'm new. Uh, I'm against somebody that is well known in the States. Uh, she got more experience. It's for the uh, Women's Championship too. Uh, you will go live on TV and uh, not on TV, but you know, on Fight TV. And there's like 2000 people watching you. And I'm like, okay do this and i need to fucking deliver you know and no but in the end it was good i'm i'm proud of it but you know you never really like satisfied oh of course not you're your own worst critic right yes yeah dream opponent who who is your dream opponent dream Oof. um i will go with um athena Oh, Athena. Oh, oh yes. okay. Yeah. Athena and uh, Chris Tatlander, too. Really? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. So do you ever follow Japanese wrestling? Is that something you ever watch? I yeah. watch some some of it, but I don't I don't like I don't know. I didn't get into it. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely um it's different. <laughs> different flavor. It's not for everybody. That's true. <laughs> mm. Are you married, Minani? <laughs> Not yet. Do you want to yes. be my husband? Are uh, you rich? <laughs> <laughs> See, there we go. They'll tell you the truth. Are you rich? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rex, gotta... Rex is rich in the super chats. So yeah, there you right. go, Rex. You saw it. Yeah, if you can help Melanie uh, support her wrestling habit, and, uh, <laughs> she'll definitely marry you. Buy me a new back, please. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, well, Nani, I want to thank you for, you know, taking the time to come on here today. And uh, where you. can we find you? If we want to book you, where can we find you? How do we get in contact with you? Well, you can uh, go on Instagram at Melanie Avic. Uh, you can go on uh, my Facebook page, Melanie Avic too. Uh, um, I have an email address too, uh, melanieavoc at hotmail.com and that's it i will respond to you mm -hmm. so if we say i'm a promoter and i want to watch some of your videos do i just go on youtube mm -hmm. and type in melanie havoc and everything yeah there? some matches on youtube uh fight tv and uh yeah did you ever think about starting your own youtube channel i have one i've okay. put some highlights on it but okay. i'm not really active on youtube it's like a lot of yeah. work yeah well, the more you put in, the more comes out, you know. But yeah, uh, you're a very lovely guest, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, um, you know, something comes out of it. And I wish you nothing but the best. And uh, thank you. Uh, yes, okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come on, and hopefully, uh, we'll see you again soon on the big TV. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bonsoir. Merci. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Well, that was Melanie Havoc, everyone, a uh, young up-and-comer from uh, Quebec, Canada. Um, yeah, I was putting some thought to it, James. Like, I was thinking maybe to help out Canadians, maybe have a, just an independent show, like, on a Sunday or something, you know? Like a one-off to... Yeah, something where you could feature Canadian independent talent. I mean... Fuck man, there's a lot of talent in Canada. Obviously, all the legends. Um, obviously, you have uh, the Hearts, etc. Um, there should be something for Canadian wrestling, like the same. There should be something for British wrestling, which there was. Unfortunately, got ravaged by WWE. Um, yeah. I mean, well, Scott Demore 
is currently unemployed and we know he's got money so perhaps what was Neo V's um place? He's got like a little school, hasn't he? Who? Uh Damore. Scott Damore. Oh um Portland, was it? Portland champ is it Portland? No, 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 no. Um was it Windsor? Some yeah, Windsor, that's it. Well he's from Windsor, uh, but uh Fuck, I forget the name was promote. It was Can Am, I think. Right. Um, oh. But no, like that. That's the thing I um, that um, annoys me about Brett. And you know, I'm a big Brett Hart fan. He hasn't really left a legacy for a future generation to say. Like you would argue, is one of the biggest names to come from Canada. Like, he didn't put that place in Canada for young wrestlers where I mean Sean even Sean had his school for like you know for a cup of coffee but Brett never gave that legacy like how his father did if that makes sense oh maybe he doesn't well I think he's trying now with his son True. Or maybe he's trying to help out his son <laughs> I mean they run a show once every six weeks. I mean, he's 65. Maybe he thinks that there's no point. I don't know. I don't know what his mindset is. I mean, Jesus Christ, I ran I ran close to 100 shows. My first tour, I did uh, 28 shows in 30 days, almost 29 because couldn't get that. But, you know, I brought in Seiya Sonata, who was, you know, IW champion, and then I put a lot of i brought canadians from ontario i brought canadians from alberta i brought canadians from quebec uh i actually brought in um an english wrestler erin angel she's from the uk and um yeah i feel like i've definitely done more for the or tried to for the canadian independent wrestler um but at the end of the day it has to be profitable you know Yes. Well, so the first tour I did, the first tour I did, uh, it was too difficult because it's cutthroat. I announced it too early, and then the local, some local fucking promoters decided to run a tour before me in all the little towns. Well, if they people, you know, they already see a show, they're not going to go back to another one two weeks later for the most part, right? Especially in these communities, you know, where it's, especially if they see a fucking really shitty show. You're not going to go back two weeks later to see another one. So Ace was on the show. Ace was uh, on the show the other day. Uh, Ace was on the show the other day, and what did they say? There was like eight shows running the same weekend in New Jersey, New York. Right. So, okay, yeah, there's a lot of population, but seeing 500 people who like indie wrestling split that into eight shows, you get 75 people per show, right? Yeah. Right. Um, But no, I mean, obviously, Canada. There's great talent everywhere you look, but. Canada, you know, it's historic for like so much talent coming through. So, yeah, we definitely need something. That's why we, I don't know how many is in the chat. I can't see, but everyone in the chat, hit the like button, share. Once we get to a hundred k, then you know, we'll see what we can do or what see Renee what can do. do. There's two hundred and fifteen people in there now. Um, I believe well, Paul London will show up on Paul London wants to show up. He's on Paul London time. You know how. Yeah, Paul is. Um, well, in the meantime, a uh, big announcement for the Hall of Fame today. Uh, the great Muhammad Ali is being inducted. So who's going to accept that on his behalf? Uh, his daughter, I would imagine. Oh, really? Oh, that's pretty Yeah, cool. I believe so. Um, obviously, WrestleMania won the enforcer in the match, Pat Patterson, the referee. Um, did you hear any stories about Muhammad Ali? Obviously, he had these uh, legendary bout with um, Anoki and such, but... Yeah, I would say, you know, I'm guessing they'll put him in the celebrity ring, but out of all the people in that celebrity ring, he's someone who you would be like, yeah, he belongs there. Also, shout out um, Cindy Lauper. She should be in there by now as well. And she still isn't. <laughs> Cindy Lauper, yeah. Um, she belongs there big time. She what? She belongs in there big time. Well, definitely that rock and wrestling connection, you know. Um, well, we got a super chat here. Hey, guys, question for Renee Thoughts on an Alexander Hammerstone signing with TNA? And are you surprised that WWE or AEW didn't jump at the chance of signing? 
Um, are we shooting straight here? Of course. Wellness. Wellness. They drug test, don't they? I don't know about AEW. <laughs> um, actually, I think Tony Khan will punish you if you're into really working out. Look what Brian Cage. <laughs> True. Um, I'm actually glad. And like we've had Hammerstone on, uh, what was it, about two years ago now, 18 months ago? Yeah. Uh, so if people want to check that episode out, they can do. It's in the archives. Um, like I'm a fan of Hammerstone. Like he's decent in the ring, good, great look, uh, good promo. Um, I think TNA, if WWE wasn't interested, obviously he's had tryouts in the past, but if WWE wasn't interested, I, he might have made more money in AEW, but I doubt they would have used him. Whereas in TNA, he can be used, be showcased, and perhaps then a couple of years down the line get a bigger offer from say an AW or even the WWE. Yeah. I just like that there's there's different options. And now that MLW won that twenty million dollar settlement, you know, hopefully they got a few bucks to throw around, maybe invest it the right way, maybe running some more shows. You know what I mean? Uh unless they want to pocket the money and just party. It depends what they want to do with it, right? Is it still Court Bauer that runs it? As far as I know. Right. Did mm. you have any experience with, with him, or was he gone by the time you got there? I never met that guy ever. He had some uh, some interesting things. He's the one that called out Randy Orton, right, for that incident in the where he went to shake his hand or something? I think so, yeah. With, in the dressing room. So, like, Randy put his hands down his pants and went to shake Court's hand or something like that. He would, like, ribbon him or whatever. Yeah. So that's Wait. the thing. Like, that's a, something a, a wrestler would do because wrestlers have terminal adolescence. We don't grow up, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I heard a lot of stories of Orton in, in his younger days, especially when he was given the belt. And basically, I think Mark Henry said it was way too soon for him to be carrying that belt and i think he had it for like a month then he put it back on triple h yeah, he... yeah well yeah man fuck 24 year old youngest world champion there uh, and he already had like a bit of an ego beforehand so you're giving the championship to him and obviously yeah. yeah i don't know if he's calmed down since since getting there uh, married again having kids and stuff that I mean, could have that's probably another reason why they were hesitant to push me stronger because of him. Yeah. You understand? They were kind of scared. Okay. Similar Randy look. Like, huh? There is a similarity between you. It's obviously, two young guy, Jack guys wrestling in trunks. Uh, you know, when you had black hair at the time as well. Like that that era, there was like wrestlers who was similar looking, and if Orton was the golden goose at the time, then I can understand why they wouldn't have pushed yourself more. Or even for example, uh, Jindrak. Um, I still think the the WCW thing hurt Jindrak. Um, the fact that he was way bigger than hunter and yeah. he worked the way he worked like mark could fucking if someone was sitting on the top rope he could jump up and drop kick him in the face he could literally jump up hit him with a hurricane rana if they're sitting on the top rope like this guy's athleticism was you know what i mean so i don't think that style is what Hunter wanted for evolution. You know, he wanted like the four horsemen style yep. old school wrestling. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Do, do, do you think that's kind of, I mean, uh, I spoke to Chuck Palumbo and he said, fact, this guy couldn't 
navigate the backstage scene, but Sean O'Hare, do you think he had that WCW stink? Because, I mean, you worked with a guy, you was a, a team with him with uh, Bowling. Um, he was guy, he, he should had, have been a superstar. He had uh, a nightlife. He liked the party. And he liked to, he liked to fight. Yeah. Uh, you got to be professional. You can't, right. uh, you know, TMZ and all that other shit. That's a bad look. You know, right. you're trying to get sponsors. You're trying to have a family friendly image. You can't be going, getting into bar fights and getting arrested. And you understand? Yeah. Especially when the company is big on like make a wish and all this other shit. And then, you know, you know, Linda McMahon's political aspirations, right? I wonder if she, I wonder if she still has them. <sighs> yeah, like if, if, if Trump, well, Trump is running for president again. Do you really want Linda on your cabinet with all the shit with Vince happening at the minute? I mean, right. wrong. No. It's not. It's not like Trump's no saint because he isn't. But like compared to Vince, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I. I, I can't. I, but I. I just can't see it. Like, are they gonna stay married now that the the world knows this? Like, what's gonna happen? Like, well, well at the minute, what's a bigger mystery? Where's Linda and Steph, or where's uh, Princess uh, Catherine over here? Because Prince Catherine, uh, Princess Catherine, is married to Prince William. She's okay. disappeared. Really? She's Hold she's disappeared. I think I might know who knows where she is. Jason, where's Prince Catherine? <laughs> Princess know. Catherine, where is she? <laughs> I'm not sure. Are you hiding her? This is pretty scary. You know what's going on. You know. <laughs> Have you ever saw that Black Mirror show? Oh my gosh, what's going yeah. on? Okay, so back to the Princess Catherine. You know, Canada, Canadians were under the British rule, so technically this can yeah. so, Commonwealth. Commonwealth, yeah. yeah. So, okay, what? She go missing? So, so she went to the uh, hospital for surgery. This was a few weeks ago. Okay. There's been rumors that her and Prince, uh, Prince William's having marriage troubles, but you don't know how much that's just tabloid. Right. Or, so for it was Mother's Day over here this past Sunday, and uh, they put out a picture of her and her three kids, uh, the future King George and like uh, the other two kids, and it got took down because everyone said the picture was actually photoshopped. Was it like I, Well, looking closer to it, it appeared to be so. Like the kids had like their fingers crossed and weird shit, and. Um, like the teeth, it was like two rows of teeth and something weird. So, w when the picture got put out to like World Press, they World Press looked into it and said this picture has been doctored. So now it's been like took down from like everywhere. So it's weird because Charles as well, King Charles. Uh, the rumor and innuendo is fact like he might actually have um cancer and he hasn't got long right we heard about that that he was diagnosed with cancer yeah and right. i think it's that i mean i'm i'm nobody so i don't know but apparently it could be worse than what's initially believed um oh, wow. so we'll have to see but obviously prince william's next in line in the throne um but yeah it's just a bit of a mystery because no one knows where uh, kate is kate middleton and that's why i draw it in compa like parallels with uh, Linda and Stephanie, because all this stuff that's happening with Vince, we haven't heard anything about Linda or Stephanie. We haven't heard about Lin uh, Stephanie for how long now? It's been a while. Well, maybe she doesn't want to be in the limelight anymore. Who knows? Right? I mean, fuck. Can Jason do shures for a solid two minutes? Shures. Shures. Sure. 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 Okay, we don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, sure. Paul London's on his way, ladies sure. and gentlemen. Uh, uh, oh, something I did want to ask you about, get your opinion on it. We spoke about him briefly, Randy Orton. 
it looks like now he's going to be facing Logan Paul at WrestleMania for the uh, US Championship. So, yeah, LA Knight's been pushed to the side. <laughs> no <laughs> shit. Time. Oh, man, that... He's still getting the pops, but they're going. They're a bit. Cl- they're, they're, they're you know they're more quiet now. But uh, this past week on SmackDown, um, KSI and uh, well, this is a double question. So KSI and Logan Paul's in the ring, and they've started advertising on the ring canvases, and prime, they've got the right? prime. Yep. Yeah. So a um, few fans are unhappy about that fact. The rings could start having sponsors, but. Every other fucker does it. UFC, WCW used to do it back in the day. So it's a bit of an eyesore, but if they place it a bit more correctly, it might work out. But anyway, um, while they're in the ring, Orton hits the ring and now KO's uh, KSI. Uh, what's your thoughts on Orton being put in this feud uh, with Logan Paul and LA Knight being pushed to the side? KSI drops my name in one of his songs. That's right. Nice. No time. The cool. song "No Time." Yeah. Uh, You're over, brother. I'm over. I didn't know who the hell he was until he showed up. Somebody tagged me in social media and said, "Hey, Renee, this guy is dropping your name." But uh, well, join the join the club. Uh, La night. You had a bit of a 50 minutes of fame, and then there she goes. You know, that's what happens. It's too bad. It reminds me of Ryback, and uh, you know, pushes like that. You know, well, that's what it gets frustrating for you, frustrating for a talent because you're just on the cusp, but then the chosen ones get the spot. Sorry, you know, and that's yeah. very frustrating for a talent. But uh, how old is LA Knight? 41, right? I believe he's about a few months older than you, or like a, a year older. Mm, okay. Well, he's just a he, kid to me. Yeah. I, he kind of sounded like, was it Austin that I got the vibes of? Yeah, a little bit it of was, Austin and rock mixed. Yeah. yeah. He, I mean, he's putting a pro, he's doing a program with AJ Styles. Which that's good, but the thing is, I love AJ Styles, but you're going to get more attention from the Logan Paul match. And that, from what I, you know, looking at it, they were having promo battles since the summer, and that seemed to be the plan. But I don't know. Um, I guess management just got tired of him, and it's like, right, we'll stick Orton in here. Safe, safe pair of hands. We know he'll work a good match with Logan Paul. Well, yeah, maybe they don't feel that. LA Knight can carry. Don't forget, Logan Paul's greener than good shit. All right? Yeah. He's a good athlete, but he's green. Good athlete, yeah, but he still needs someone to carry him. Maybe they don't have confidence in LA Knight because the last thing they want to do is make that guy look bad, right? Because that guy's well, money for them. Well, like, so the opponents he's had at, like, singles matches. Last year, WrestleMania, Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins, great wrestler. Um, he had a feud with the Miz. Say what you want to say about the Miz. He's a capable wrestler. He's safe. Um, he's had Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is fine. He's had Roman Reigns. Obviously, Roman Reigns is, in my opinion, one of the best wrestlers at the minute. Does nothing flashy, but he's a safe pair of hands. So give it to Orton. Orton's been there for a long time, and Orton's, in my opinion, one of the greats. So he's going to have a safe match with him. Why doesn't KSI and Logan Paul advertise their crypto scam on the mat? Don't ask me. <laughs> I'm trying to get my crypto out and I still can't. Jason, can you imitate? No, we're going to fuck the imitations right now. <laughs> there, I can't believe it. <laughs> there's more Vince news revealing Nick Khan new. What? What's going on? I guess he's saying there's more Vince news that Nick Khan Nick Khan knew about. Knew? Oh, chat. Let us know if there's some more breaking news on Vince. That'd be interesting. James, do you follow F1? What's happening with Christian Horner at Red Bull? Muhammad Ali deserves to be in the Hall of Fame as much as Snoop Dogg. He doesn't. I disagree on that. Muhammad Ali. I disagree. 
deserves uh, to be in that big time. Ali was, yeah, I, he deserves it. It was the first WrestleMania iconic, just like Cindy Lauper and Liberace. That was the first one. That's, you know what I mean? I mean, if we could take a time machine and go back to, was it 84 was the first WrestleMania one? Yes. Yeah, Ali, yes. WrestleMania 40 yeah. this year. Yeah. Ali being a part of anything brought mainstream attention. So yeah, and he crossed uh, over a few times with like Gorilla Monsoon. They had a match with Antonio Inoki. Like he did a lot of cross promoting with wrestling back in the day as well. But of course, greatest of all time, biggest name the Hall of Fame's ever seen, in my opinion. Mm, I, um, I agree with you guys. I mean, I'm, that's the name I was talking about, the big name. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've seen the list as well, Jason. <laughs> You got it. You got to do a James. We're going to do it. Just don't bust it out right now, but somewhere in the conversation, just bust out a James for us. Okay. As long as James is okay. With He's it. okay with it. Trust me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he Trust me. He won't mind. He's like, he doesn't mind. <laughs> he loves it. Uh, what other news? News before Paul London shows up because Paul London will be here, folks. Yeah. I'm just going to get it up. Uh, ask for the F1 question. Uh, so uh motor racing christian horner's team boss of red bull but he's married to one of the spice girls jerry spice or ginger spice jerry hallowell he's basically oh, yeah. caught yeah he's basically caught sexting one of his uh, employees what so yeah well this is the thing he was married before and his wife just gave birth and like a few months later he was with ginger spice so like he's done this before so now he's married to Ginger Spice. I think they've got a couple of kids. And he was caught, I think, sexting one of his employees. Something like that. And, um, I mean, she's part of the United French. Like, we're still happy together. But, um, yeah. So that's what's happening with that. So, uh, but Red Bull's still dominating F1. So nothing's changed. You know, I was watching a YouTube channel with, um, I think it was... Uh soft white underbelly you know he that's a really good channel where he interviews different people from different walks of life and he had sometimes he has prostitutes on there you know professional escorts and call girls and yep. they were saying you know majority of their clientele are married men and oh yeah basically, basically what they say is like listen if you can't do it for your husband in the bedroom he'll go somewhere else and do it right especially if he's providing for the family and doing everything he needs to do as a man right so uh so i've just found the uh nick khan thing okay it's from um facebook dirt sheet radio so i'm not saying this is true i'm just gonna read what's been said okay Break, breaking news WWE president nick khan and c OO Brad Blum have been identified as corporate officers number one and two in the lawsuit filed in January in federal court in Connecticut against WWE, former chairman Vince McMahon, and former tight relations John Laurinaitis. The suit claims that Khan and Blum, whose names have not previously been reported, were instrumental to the scheme in which the plaintiff, Janelle Grant, was employed in a completely undefined role except for the understanding that she remains a slave to be used and trafficked by McMahon within the WWE. Unlike McMahon and Lauren Ayers, the two are not personally accused of misconduct or violence. Rather, the suit claims that they and others facilitated and covered up exploitation in ways to make WWE liable. I'm not saying that's true, but that's what Dirt Sheet Radio's reported. So what's being reported, allegedly, is that Nick Khan, who... Let's face it, he's the golden goose as far as making all these deals, right? All these TV deals, the Netflix deal. He's like one of the the main guys, the mover and shaker. He's a very important piece to that fucking puzzle. He knew about and tried to cover up the Vince McMahon situation. Hold on a second. Paul has arrived. Paul, okay. we just got breaking um, news, pal. Right. Add a little color to this situation. Jason, right, lovely. James, lovely. Yes, Tell us your fucking uh, news. It's, it's getting reported by more people now. Uh, 
Brandon Lovely Thurston from Recognom uh, WrestleNomics, John Pollock. So yeah, it's actually getting reported everywhere now. So okay. now we can speak about it more. <laughs> okay, what? So Tell me. Everybody is reporting that Nick Khan, you know, he's the Rock's buddy, high school friend, but the guy who does all the big deals like the, the, the SmackDown uh, TV deals worth billions and the Netflix deal worth 500 million, that he was a part of the alleged cover up of this uh, Vince McMahon, Stephanie Grant. But the thing is, what did Aero Area Manuel say that anybody who was who knew about this and tried to cover it up would be gone? Isn't that what he was quoted saying? Yep. Can they get rid of that piece? I mean, that guy is like a huge fucking chess piece. I mean. Well said. You know what He's I mean? He's the guy who's changed WWE the last few years. Yeah. Finance, the sales, knew, everything. If he knew, then Stephanie and fucking Hunter knew because he was a part of the guys trying to vote Vince out, right? Yeah. Okay, so is Ariel Emanuel a man of his word? We'll find out. Um, isn't that who, um, isn't that how they modeled uh, Jeremy Piven's character and Entourage after Ari? For real? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's who they modeled his character after in Entourage was Ari Emanuel. That's why his name's Ari. Really? I thought you were joking. Okay, could you describe oh, the character good. for those who haven't seen the show? Um, I mean, it's not like it's him. No, no. But, but I mean, what's the character like? like? He won. He won awards for that show because he was such a. He was such a. He became such a breakout character in that show. But he was just a real power agent. Um, ruthless, aggressive power agent. You know. Where it's would all about the bottom dollar. A pack of shit who would do anything by any means to get what he wants? I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to speak ill of Ari Emanuel because I still have a career to worry about, but also I don't know the guy. <laughs> if we're talking about Nick Khan. I'm just talking about the character uh, on Entourage. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, but that character was like, it was big. It was big. It was a big, it was a huge role for him. Probably his biggest role, actually, Jeremy Piven. But I'm, if I'm not mistaken, huh? Uh, Jeremy Piven James wasn't he the one that calls SummerSlam Summerfest? Summerfest, yeah. That was Jeremy Piven. <laughs> yeah. Ken, yeah Ken, he, uh, he was Ken like a G special guest uh, Raw announcer or Raw GM, You're right? Yeah, that going on every it week. Was him and Ken Jeong, the actor, the other actor, Ken Jeong, and it, Ken Jeong had to like correct him. It's like SummerSlam. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I saw pictures of him and Kelly Kelly at a baseball game too. She looked like she would rather fucking be getting an enema than be there with him in that picture. It is baseball. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I actually watched the uh, Rush Hour two the other night, and Jeremy Piven's in it as a cameo, uh -huh. and he's fucking nice. hilarious in that movie. He plays. He's great. He plays a He's in. He, he's working as a salesman for like Gucci, and he's a he's a flamboyant. We'll say that, and he's like, you got the mochaccino face, but a cream, but a cream, crack skin, but a cream, but a cream. How small is the waist? Let's go in. And Chris Tucker's like, whoa, hang on, the sweetness. <laughs> it's a fucking hilarious scene. Oh man, <laughs> well, guys, this is. I mean, this is big news, man. Like, did you ever? Did you ever meet that guy, Nick? Con I don't. I don't know what he looks like. Um, I seen a picture of him. He's like, I don't know, classy fella. Can you bring one up on your phone, James? Well, uh, Nick Khan. Yeah. He looks a little bit like Samoa Joe. Really? In a suit. Yeah. Um, no, actually, not at all. <laughs> like, not at all. <laughs> He looks like a, a, a we'll power agent. He looks like a wheeler and dealer. He looks like someone important. Yeah. Yeah, Actually, that was. He kind of looks Middle Eastern, if you were to ask me. Like, oh, no shit. His name's Khan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The Khan man. How can, you get, how can you get Khan mixed with a Samoan? Jason, Jesus Christ. 
Because he could be from the Isle of Kanoa. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, right there. What is that mugshot? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Look yeah. at the eyes. Yeah. Sinister. That guy looks like a that guy looks like a villain in Aladdin. Right. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Samoa Joe. Anyway, we'll get back. To <laughs> Does it look Samoa Joe? <laughs> We'll get. We'll get. <laughs> that looks nothing just because like he's fat. <laughs> I mean, that looks like AEW Samoa Jeff. Joe. That looks, like, that looks like Samoa Joe in the AEW game. He, he, look, he looks. He looks like an Arabic Shane McMahon. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> What's WWE's thing when inducting people after they die? I'll leave it. That's one of their thing. Post. They can't say no. That's why exactly. they can't say no. They can't and the decline. Families need money, and the families need money. Uh, superstar Billy Graham. Superstar Billy Graham's never been in a WWE game. He's the pre-order bonus for WWE 2K24. Obviously, because his poor wife, his poor widow, needs money, so they've paid her so he can be in the game. Before that, he's never been in a WWE game. Really. But he's in the Hall of Fame, isn't he? Or did was he one of the ones who declined yeah, it? He was there. Were you with the company like, yeah, WrestleMania yeah, 20? WrestleMania 20. That's when he got inducted. Yeah. That I was met him. That's right. I was like, okay. Dude, that but was somebody the they, they had approached somebody. I don't know if it was San Martino or somebody in like or somebody's family and they declined. And like um, that's the thing. They answer the question. It's like people will decline. Like you wonder why there's so many absurd entries in the hall of fame um it's because they go down the list and it's like well they said no they said no they said no oh they said no um so by the time they get to the trickle down you have baseball players and models and all this other bullshit mm. <clears throat> question for jason what was john tender like when he Turned to the WWF in '98, and how much did he hurt doing the oddities gimmick? How he actually, he, he really loved. Yeah, well, he was a great guy. I, I got to know him. I would uh, sit beside him on flights. Really nice person. He's Canadian and, uh, too, right? From Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah. And such a great guy, and um, he really loved doing the oddities gimmick. Actually, he really? he enjoyed playing Golga. Yeah. He was just always pushing to go out. He just loved wrestling. He loved being out on TV. He was just, yeah, he, he was enjoy, enjoying and happy to take any role. He was just, mm. you know, always pushing to get back on TV, play more of a serious role, even though he was kind of, a, you know, okay. the whole oddities gimmick, right? Brandon Thurston, is that a reporter? Yeah, uh, WrestleNomics. Okay, well, he posted an article on Twitter about... Um, Samoa Joe's cousin. Staying on that. <laughs> staying on that. I'll clip this with the early clip. So if it is true, because uh, in the um, the court docs, it did say like you know executive one, executive two. So obviously, if it is true and he was executive one, like I said, Ari Emanuel's not scared to do a clean out. How much does this affect WWE? Because Basically, now it's the two guys in charge of WWE is Nick Khan and Triple H. Now, Nick Triple H has not been named, but like you said earlier, him and Steph, along with Nick Khan, voted against Vince returning. That's it. If well, Stephanie and Hunter were to get ousted, if Stephanie and Hunter were to get ousted, would we see Macho Man Randy Savage in the Hall of Fame? He's in the Hall of Fame. Oh, he is? Yeah. Lanny and oh. who did Lanny, his brother? Oh, he did. When you, uh, what year was that? Well, it goes to show how much I've been keeping up with the Hall of Fame. I thought he right. was like Chris Lemon on Grotta or something, but again, they they nominated, they nominated him after he was gone, or they inducted yeah. him after he was gone. I don't, I don't know if Macho Man got inducted by himself or if it was the Poffo family. No, it was just, okay, him. yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, let me check that. They didn't have that. Stephanie do it. Oh snap! Why would Stephanie do it? Just you know, 
Yeah. Nice lady. Yeah, sure. Where's the lie? Come on, Paul. Where's the lie? Where's it's the, the lie? second time I've heard that today. For real? We're well, going to hear it again and again I hope and again. Not. Hey, Paul, when it comes to gluten-free food, which foods tend to taste worse or better? Well, that's a great question. Thank you. I tend to explore a lot with my gluten-free adventures because some of it, well, let's be honest, is like cardboard. Uh, but some of it's actually pretty good. Um, Glutinos usually makes pretty good quality stuff. Uh, I'm a little bummed because recently I learned that DiGiorno's, who makes one of the better or made one of the better gluten-free pizzas, I guess isn't making it anymore. Which is a bummer. Because nobody buys but, it. I mean, they were always sold out, so I don't know what the issue is. Um, but it was like a nice thick crust pizza. So DiGiorno's, if you're out there listening, hit me up. Um, and, but yeah, it's it's a lot of it's trial and error. Um, you know, a lot of it's really depending on like what stores you go to. Walmart actually has a really good gluten free section that I tend to get a lot of stuff from. Um, but ultimately it's about knowing what's in the ingredients. Dude, like I remember like in 99, 2000, there was impact carbs. And then all of a sudden this gluten shit comes out. Like where was gluten yeah. in the nineties? It wasn't gluten. It was impact carbs. Right. They were hanging out with the total nonstop action carbs. Oh, um, oh, and yeah. And then that, yeah, that fell apart. And so, then, yeah. Uh, anyway, I just want to say, looking good, boys. Looking real good. Okay, thank you, Smitty. Thank you, Smitty. Smitty, thanks. Listen, yeah, Michael you. Kenyon, we grew up watching you, Renee and Paul. Absolutely love you both. Thank you. Love you more. Sing true you. Love you too, brother. James, you're a top man. Top man. Fuck on hell. You're a top man. And Jason, such a pure heart. Love you all. What the fuck was that? Thanks, Michael. <laughs> what was that? That was my Brian Dixon impersonation. Oh, fuck on hell. Yeah, I thought, that was the, the worst James impression I've ever heard. Well, that was shit. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it, Gorbett. Related to you may be the star of the show, but your impression of me fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is the accent? <laughs> Sounds like like David boy. <laughs> I've got a weird accent, that's the problem, because I've lived all up and down the country, so I've got like a messed up accent anyway. Yeah, it's, who, it's, who has the most distinguished accent, James? Like in terms of like in England, who would who? Or Scouse. I guess not distinguished. What is it? Liverpool. Scouse. Yeah, I would say Liverpool. Yeah, definitely Liverpool. You know Scouse? when you're talking to Scouser, Scouser, Liverpool. Scouser. Yeah. What about uh, is it back country or black country? Black country, Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah, like more in the forest. Uh, like my family's northern. Uh, they're from um. Like Yorkshire, so it's like you know, <laughs> so that, that's like Yorkshire. Yeah. Uh, as, as I've moved down to Bristol a few years ago, and I didn't realize how strong the accent was. Like, all right, from Bristol, dang, it basic, basically, you sound like Samwise Ganji from Lord of the Rings. That's a Bristolian <laughs> accent. <laughs> yeah, you learn know more when you live there because I lived in England for like up to six months at a time, and like you'll have a hot girl, but she's from Liverpool and she'll talk and. She's not as hot anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's not a great. And I, I, I'm a Liverpool fan. It's so yeah. but whenever I've I uh, went to Liverpool a few years ago when we won the Champions League. So, uh, so I'm in the parades and we're surrounded. Me and my wife surrounded by Scousers. Like Liverpool, <laughs> and it's screw Stevie G. <laughs> I'm like Jesus <laughs> Christ, that fucking accent. Mm. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Rise of the Foot Soldier? I haven't watched them. <laughs> what? No, I haven't watched them. I've watched Football Factory. I've watched Green Street. I've watched uh, ID, all them, but I haven't watched Foot Soldier. Oh, my. I got to go, guys. Oh, I'll tell you a great TV show. <laughs> it just came out on Netflix. Uh, so there's the movie of your favorite actor, Paul uh, Charlie Hunnam, <laughs> the gentleman. Oh, yeah. I love that fucking Bond yeah, Wars. Awesome. Great Christmas. They've done a spin off series on Netflix. And it's that uh, Theo James. He's actually a good actor. Uh, the Gentleman. It's directed by Guy Ritchie. So you got that Guy Ritchie sort yeah. of feel. Uh, it's actually a decent show, to be honest. I watched the first couple of episodes and they're fucking hilarious. 
I mean, I think if anybody could pull any anything out of Charlie Hunnam, it would be Guy Ritchie. So yeah, Nick Khan and Tony Khan are sons of Killer Khan. There you go. And <laughs> descendants of Khan. Kind of humor. <laughs> Thoughts on Vince possibly being connected with all the billionaires trafficking and more islands being around might be breaking news someday. Thought you think? I don't think so. He's too busy lifting weights to care about that. Well, was Vince an investor in Nexium? Probably. What's the question? You know, it was like, okay, like, you know, all these billionaires that are into, like, this pedophilia ring with the elites and all that shit. Is Vince a part of that? I don't think so. I think Vince is, like, in a league of his own. He's too much into bodybuilding to care about that. Scatology, bodybuilding, yeah, the usual. Yeah. Um, hey, Jason, hope you're well. If Renee and Paul are the broken nose connection, then what is yours and James' tag team name? The Jobbers. <laughs> 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 James, um, James and James. <laughs> yeah, I'm James number two. Yep. <laughs> Give it to me again, James. James here, James there, here, there, everywhere. Uh, <laughs> I don't talk like that. <laughs> I'm trying to work out the accent. You guys want to go on a field trip? Where are we going, Paul? Where are we going? Where are we going, buddy? Where are we going? I'm coming with you. You are. Okay. Uh, James, <laughs> give us some news. Give us some uh, action. Uh, oh, Jason's gone. Uh, he was right about uh, Matcha Man. He was inducted by himself. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. One, man. No, because. Um, I saw a shoot interview with Lanny Poffo. He was uh what's that guy we had on here? He does the uh the 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 podcast with Kevin Nash. Oh Sean Oliver. Sean Oliver, K Fade Commentaries. Lanny had done a uh behind the curtain or behind the K Fade with him or whatever it's called. And he said that he was getting death threats because people think he was holding up Macho Man and his brother to be in the Hall of Fame. Because he wanted to be in there, but Macho Man said that his dying wish was to get into the Hall of Fame as the Powerful was like a family, like the Von Erics were. I remember that, right? But then uh, Lanny just said, you know, my he's dead. I'm the big brother, so, and I'm sure they gave him a shit ton of money too. Hopefully, actually, um, Hogan inducted him. He accepted on Macho's behalf. But... Did you hear what Scotty Steiner did at the airport? Oh yeah. He almost got put in fucking in prison. He I'm gonna Hogan's fuck wife. up Paul Cody. <laughs> he yeah, him. he went to Hogan's wife in the airport and he said the fact that Hulk is inducting uh, Macho Man is bullshit. <laughs> and then fucking Hogan called the cops on him. And Steiner was banned for being at the fucking Hall of Fame. They had a picture of Scotty. He said, Don't let this man enter. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah. I'm reading that. <laughs> yeah, Scott Steiner, he's like sneaking in with like a fake mustache and like glasses and like trench coat. Right. I'm there amazed. Is. I'm amazed. No, that's like a terroristic threat. That's a serious fucking charge, man. That's like 10 years. You know? It's true. Paul, pretty sure I've seen you pop up like the likes comments of Drilla Dan Maloney's post and thoughts on Yeah, I like Drilla, man. You know. Dan Maloney, dude. He's in New Japan? I never heard of him. Yeah. Really good? really good, dude, man. Solid dude. Solid work. I think he's got a is he IWGP tag champ right now, I think. I don't know. They usually change that belt every six months or every three months. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Same thing with the Noah tag titles, man. They switched it over every fucking two weeks. And that means shit. 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 Yeah. Where are you going, James? Uh, J Paul? Where are you headed? Just going for a walk? Going for a. I'm hmm. at a peaceful park oh, okay. to visit souls of yesteryear. I was going to say, I thought you was at a cemetery. What's that? You're at a cemetery. Yeah. It's usually where I hang out. Uh, There's less people here. 
There's a lot of people here, right? But they're not There's too a lot busy. People there, <laughs> not very yeah, talkative. They're, they're not gonna. No, my kind of mutes. I respect them. my condolences. Uh, I've got Thanks. an interesting question for you, um, Paul. You can relate to this. Obviously, it's uh, happening in Hollywood. Um, John Cena at the Oscars. He appeared on stage, basically, well, naked, basically. What? Really? Yeah, he presents the award naked. Um, we've been watching Cat Williams, and these talks about how Hollywood has to humiliate you before you, they start giving you roles, like such as wearing dresses and movies and do it, jumping through hoops. Isn't he wearing What's a dress in his movie? Oh, yeah, and his movie's just brought out. He wears a dress. He actually started, like, an OnlyFans account as well. Uh, subscribe, oh. everyone. Um, <laughs> 599. <laughs> um, what's your thoughts Hollywood on that? finally turned him heel. Yeah. Here's a solid one. Oh, Marty Feldman. Whoa. Hell yeah. I love Marty Feldman. I always visit him. Awesome. One of the greats. This is so. Uh, um, Paul, thoughts on your match yeah. with Idris Jackson? That top tope looked rough, but really enjoyed it. Jason, can we get a classic Steiner? There is no Hall of Fame. How is your really match with Idris Jackson? Yeah, I had, a, I had a good time working with the guy. What's that? All right. <laughs> Yeah, I had a really solid time working with him. I had a great experience up there. He's really talented, and they have a lot of uh, – it's legacy pro wrestling. It's amazing red. It's got this uh, – I mean, they they kind of look at it as like the NXT of House of Glory. Uh, but they just, just had such a great experience up there. Uh, crazy tope notwithstanding. Um, hey, that's why they call it high risk, you know. I know the risks that I'm taking every time I go out there. Uh, and I've just always been taught and brought up to deliver as much as I can. So I'm not saying like, oh, the people want to see me die. Uh, but I'm going to always put in every ounce of effort I have. Uh, and my legs were not really under me that night either so uh otherwise it would have been like a flying drop kick or something so i was like well i have more energy in the upper body i'm just i'll come out and attack him like that so um uh, but yeah i appreciate the the kind feedback from it because i had a great time and really solid locker room everyone was just really talented and great venue great facility there in queens uh i, I hope i can go back sometime you know, uh, that one dude hit me in the head with a book or something and almost knocked me out. So I owe that bastard a, a receipt. I don't think I forgot about you, Hillary. <laughs> yeah, that's a guy. <laughs> I'm trying to show you one more. These are around here somewhere. I always, I always pay my respects to to this legend. Uh, you look great, Jason. Oh, Happy you're you here, man. Good. Yeah, thanks. It's really good to see you again. They, they've been keeping us separated, brother. We're on the different brands. <laughs> yeah. It's when they don't want you to ride together because it's like those two guys just talk and we can't have them together <laughs> because they're going to disrupt our whole lesson plan. There we go. Okay. Well, it's always a pleasure to see you, bro. I'm going to hey, finally James. get WhatsApp this year and we can keep in touch more. The legend himself. Bill Paxton. That's it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I still forget how young he was when he died. What was he, like 60, 57, some of that? Yeah. I think 62, maybe 60. Right. Um, I was in Peru when I got that news, and I just, man, just started bawling. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, he was just absolutely one of my absolute idols. I just loved 
Love Bill Paxton, anything, anything he was in. Anything. He just, he made every scene just, he was just incredible. Uh, <clears throat> I look at uh, Tech Men, too, man. So if y'all haven't oh, seen this, this film, too, I highly recommend this film to those of you out there. It's called Frailty. Oh, called I love Frail- that. That's an amazing yeah. movie. Frailty. It's got it's Bill Paxton. He he wrote it and directed it, and it stars him and uh, Matthew McConaughey. And I haven't uh, seen that forever. That's a great group. Another great Texan. I mean, it's like all Texans. It's mm-hmm. it's such a like as a Texan, it's a film. I'm really I'm like ah, oh, that's we need more of these rich Texas uh, films done by Texas filmmakers with Texans. And uh, that's right. <laughs> It's a great story, though. Frailty. Raw high. Yeah. Powers, Powers Booth. Uh, oh, rest in peace. Powers Booth, another great Texan. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mess with the bull, get the horns. Yeah. Oh, Powers Booth did. I'm sorry? Powers Booth, is he dead? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Unfortunately, I believe so. I didn't know that either. When did he die? But he's great. Uh, recently. I want to say in the last three years, maybe. John Cena in a night at the Bellas on OnlyFans, also featuring Vince McMahon in the Bowel Nightmares. Special Johnny Ace getting the strap from Janelle. Rex, you have so. a wild imagination, my friend. That's Rex Gardner, folks. He's uh, we love him here. <laughs> Me too. Paul, how did it feel that time you got your balls out and nice? What? Paul. <laughs> Paul, did you pull out Renee Dupree? That. Did you pull out Renee Dupree, Paul? Did I what? Did you pull a Renee Dupree and get your balls out? No, I was sober. Oh, okay. Um, no, I was just <laughs> fucking with you. <laughs> I don't think I was actually. I was pretty. I think I was pretty lit. Oh, uh, Did that happen? It was it an accident? No, nah, it was CGI. Oh. <laughs> he loves you, man. Thanks for the great memory. It was AI. Oh, AI. Um, what's your guys' thoughts on the boxer Ryan Garcia behavior online, and also making some big claims on Andrew Tate's part? Who's Ryan Garcia? James, are you aware of what's going uh, on? He's a boxer oh, yeah. and basically alleged to part he got uh, molested as a kid. Jesus. Oh. By boxing people, like trainers and stuff, or family, or what? I forgot, I forgot who he said, but that's... Um, let's try and find what he said. Uh, but I know it was something along them lines. Andrew Tate, that guy is like defending uh, Vince McMahon, saying that he's innocent too, right? Yep. That's your boy. Like you, you're you think he's the greatest thing ever. I did. did. <laughs> what did he no, say? Did. What did he... <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay, people, I was wrong. Okay. <laughs> About mm. someone. Let's be honest, everyone in this chat one time fucking loved Vince McMahon. <laughs> so don't judge me. <laughs> Just very happy to see these four extraordinarily dapper gentlemen today. Thanks for being here. Have an excellent week. Well, thank you, Still Dubell. Still Dubell. Yeah. Dubell. Still Dubell. <laughs> We're just missing Jonah. Uh, Jonah, Jonah. Yeah, seriously. Jonah. You miss Jonah? Hopefully. Yeah. See him in a couple weeks. And maybe in Chloe, I think. Uh, we have the whole band here. Yeah, I might see him too in New York because I'm headed there in uh, April. April twenty. Are you really? Yes. I got a sign. Yeah, we'll up. have to do like a. We we should get like, uh, if James is cool with it, James could be like <clears throat> our fink, and we'll give him all our dates, and he can list off the upcoming appearances. Like, we all like coming soon to a town near. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, of course, mine it'll be like two things. It'll be like Paul's here and there. That's it. Actually, why we have Jason Sensation here who can do the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Looking forward to the future dates. 
we go to the beach and dance. <laughs> oh, that's so good. All of four of you, if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, sushi for me. Really? What are you, John Lennon? <laughs> yeah. All right, that's cool. <laughs> All we are saying. Stay away from Marks. I got a Japanese you know what I mean? Just give peace a chance. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. You do have your own Yoko. All we are saying. Don't let her sing. Whatever you do, don't let her sing. Give peace a That's what we used to do when we started dating. We'd go to karaoke. Yeah. What about you guys? What would you guys eat? What would you eat? We'll see. What'd you say? What'd you say? <laughs> you say kitty cat. <laughs> kitty cat. Kitty cat. You say Garfield. I <laughs> said I think he said Pit Cat, but you're cut off. <laughs> you're cut off. James quit drinking. Oh my here's, one, here's, one, here's one more for you, James. <laughs> Whoa, what's that? Walker? Oh, was... oh Paul Walker, is it? Yeah. No Paul shit. Walker. Yeah. Wow. That's a shame. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, here, I'll show you. You're right. It is um, shame. I'm just saying. So I can turn this around. It's a nice monument. Rest is so. Well, I can't turn around because I'm stupid. But I'll try to show you. Like little... Just see, there's like little, little cars. Was that the car he died in? No, but just people usually bring toy cars. cars and yeah. stuff. I think it was bigger than that, Renee. Give you a toy. Fuck it. That ain't like fun. <sighs> Here, let's talk about James fucking idol. Andrew Tate's full of crap. Any guy out there who looks up to that guy can do better. You don't need to worship a personality to define who you are. There you go, James. You worship puss, okay, Rex? You worship puss. <laughs> How dare you say that? You're not a top G. <laughs> now I sound like Rowdy Piper, Jason. Get the accent straight. Uh, no, that sounds like Rowdy Piper, Jay. Come on now. That was Andrew Tate. Not Rowdy, Rowdy Piper. Come on. Andrew Tate, Logan Paul, his douchebag brother, and KSI are one of the same. Oh, no way. oh Jake Paul's fighting uh, Mike Tyson in June. Oh, wow. I, I, I saw that. Paul, did you hear about that? Mike Tyson fate. Do you think that's a work? It's just a fucking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. 100%. Guys, yeah, it's, not, it's, work. it's all work. It's going to be a fucking exhibition style. They're going to work it. Um, they're gonna give Tyson a shit ton of money to put him over. I say. I hope so. Yeah, it's totally so a work. Cool. People on, already feeding it. People already buying it. They're already, you know, destroy and all that stuff. As if, as if Tyson has a, a personal beef in the matter, you know. Or like, I mean, I think it's like. Objective is just don't talk stupid. Your connection, your connection's breaking up, Paul. <laughs> Listen, I'll yeah. So I was just saying, me. I think Tyson's only objective is just to not. I just yeah, Tyson just needs to not look stupid. Right. No, I guarantee oh, no, he sees he sees dollar signs. He's gonna get fucking paid, bro. Gonna be live on Netflix. Yeah, but I don't think he's gonna take a dive for. This. I don't think he's gonna dive for this guy. I mean, come on. Uh, they'll probably do a, a finish that everybody can agree on, unless he swerves him and knocks him the fuck out, which wouldn't surprise me. Listen, what I was, was the watching last the fight. Loss that that dude the had. What? The what? What are you talking about? Has that dude lost Jake Paul or whatever? Oh, uh, yeah. The, uh, my boy, Tommy Ferry. Hmm. Oh, he Tyson's beat him? Brother. Well, half, yeah, Tyson's well, half-brother. Yeah, he beat him. 
Was it points or knockout or decision? I don't... Points. I don't think we're going to see any knockouts. Oh, they're they're pushing this Paul guy, all right. They're they're giving this guy the shove because they see uh, money. It's 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 all a work, folks. Why would any of the women wrestlers from TNA be there anyway, Paul? <laughs> no knockouts. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you, Mark D. Brown. Give the thumbs up a chance and smash it. Thank you, pal, for the support. We love you. We love you all. As I was saying, I was watching I'm Friday I'm night fights. I, I was watching Friday night fights when I was a kid with my dad, right? And, and we're watching, we're watching, and then all of a sudden we can hear clear as day the referee says, Go home, guys. And then sure as shit, no. we saw like left, left hook, boom. Yeah, we heard it. My dad looks at me, he goes, You hear that? I go, I heard it. You could hear the ref say, Go home. And then it was like left jab, right hook, boom, the guy went down. Boxing's a total fucking no, Yep. That's funny. Yep. Um, but I want to go back to uh, this Vince McMahon headline because that, you know, is going to blow up. Um, I want to see if... It was, hold on. My buddy texted me. Was Ari Emanuel involved in some type of fucking sex thing too in the 2000s? Some type of fucking... Uh, didn't he have his own issue um no it was exactly but i know there was a a settlement involved here we go here's some breaking news miro uh, and lana have broken up oh no oh, oh no oh no cool. cj perry and miro relationship over after seven years straight from tmz didn't you see it? She had her Instagram. She had like an Instagram story like leaked or some shit. And she was like with someone, and people was like, that's not Miro. <laughs> this was a while really? back. Apparently, he's a fucking cook. Apparently, he's a cook and he enjoys watching, allegedly. The old Lawler gimmick? The internet. So <laughs> <laughs> must be true. Oh, Jason got it. Come on, look at him and look at her. Come on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Are we ever participant? <laughs> Jason. <laughs> no. Beaver. No. no, maybe a possibility, but it didn't pan out. <laughs> Listen, relationships in wrestling, man, they don't work out, okay? They don't. All right, Renee, this one's for you. Well, also right. for anybody else who loves. It's darkness. Darkness. <laughs> well, the thing with Lana, when she was in WWE, every angle she was in was about her and like another wrestler. Oh, oh the... Ronnie James Deal. It's oh. look at that fucking tomb, dude. Oh wow. Nice. Right, here I'll show you is uh, planters. Nice. Cool. This is very cool. Oh, this is yeah, cool. wasn't she involved in an angle with uh, uh, Lashley where it was basically a cuck? Lashley, um, Enzo, with Morgan. They was having like a lesbian affair. <laughs> like, Aren't they doing something it? similar with the other Tony? Tony Storm? What's no, with on on AEW or something. Wasn't what's her gimmick over there? Like hot oh, legs or something? Or some stupid fucking name like that. I don't know. I don't, I don't watch that show. Like basically, she would like manage like every dude except for her guy. <laughs> oh, she was managing Andrade. Yeah. Oh. But it was like that's too bad. hot. Like hot love service or some like that was the name, the name of her gimmick or something. It was like I don't know if she was like supposed to be like an escort or something. I don't know what it was. Paul's, pre <laughs> Paul's pretending he doesn't watch AEW. You know full well he does. Well, no, I get all my <laughs> all my AEW info. I get is you know from uh, other podcasts. Um, but 
There ain't no you know, other I like... podcast. It's only Cafe Day, Renee. There is no other podcast. Well, well hold on a second. if you guys did the watch along, so you promised us us uh, Patreon subscribers. You never then... joined, Paul. Paul, you never joined. <laughs> oh, that was the issue. Oh, my my card declined on my Patreon uh, account. I tried. I, dude, I tried for two or three months, and I just I can't do it. I can't watch current day wrestling. It just is fucking brutal. It's pretty rough. Um. Oh, Paul, brutal. can you find Jim Morrison? Is he in that graveyard? Oh, wait, he's in France. Isn't what? He? He's in Paris, dude. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if they shipped Liber- him back. Liberace's here. For real? Yeah, you want to see Liberace? So how often do you go to the graveyard to look at tombstones, Paul? Whenever I got to get rid of some memories. Oh. Hey, well, you did tell me about walking in the nature, and you're absolutely right. It does help. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, you know, I've said this before, I think, but even like as a writer or anybody looking to create stories or, you know, really writers or whatever, you can get some great names uh, at the cemetery. Great character names. I mean, obviously, you can mix them up. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I just, I've got promos here before in the past. Uh, you know, always get like a nice sound echo. Is that him? So, I wanted to be in mortuary science when I was a child. That was something I was like really heavily interested in. And so it's just always been something that I've enjoyed being around that atmosphere. And I remember I wrote like a hundred page, my big final like graduation paper in high school for English was a hundred page uh uh I guess I don't know if you'd call it a thesis or whatever it's on embalming like the whole embalming process. So I just yeah here's Liberace. Whoa nice look there. Oh a fan wants to know is Joy Ryan's career buried there? Is... Paul is Cor- uh, Joy Ryan's career buried in that cemetery too. Uh, <laughs> would, that wouldn't be allowed at this cemetery, right? I can't. Yeah. I can't say where that cemetery is. Mm. Okay, so my uh, friend here wrote to me: Is is there an, allegedly Emmanuel was involved in his own sex scandals in the early two thousands? I forgot what it was, but I know there was a settlement. There was a settlement. Yeah, okay. I forgot what I forgot what it was exactly, but I know there was a settlement. Okay, so it might be the the pot calling the kettle black here with this guy. Yeah. Uh, Renee, something you wanted to talk about before we forget? Um, old Japan wrestler um, sadly passed away, age of fifty. Yeah, brother. Oh, I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get his name here for a second. Um, uh, I've got I it. Wrestled, um, I wrestled him actually in 2008. He I, he was wrestling for All Japan Pro Wrestling. You <laughs> Yoshi. Uh, just a you talking Yoshi? Just a moment. Yeah, Yoshi Yukata. Man, he's right there. So she worked in yeah, oh wow, he was wrestling for um all Japan pro wrestling. He's a lot bigger than <laughs> I thought, I didn't realize he was that big. Yeah, um, heart attack, he was he was too heavy. What do you think he weighed like 325? Um, he was definitely a 300 pounder, yeah, he built like a sumo, he was on that sumo diet. But a really nice guy. I think that one dude, that Australian dude, what's his name, Jonah or something? Jonah, yeah. How big is that dude? He's up there. He, I kind of, kind of read, you know, at the first glance, I was like, oh, he's got a very similar body type to that dude. 350, I'd say. Close to four. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a big boy. 
big boy. Oh, that guy. He seems like he's pretty good, right? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know who I'm really impressed with? I saw a few clips was those fucking Vikings. Yeah, man. Hansen is like one of the greatest dudes, too, man. I, uh, I love that dude. Is that the balding he's, guy or are they both balding? The biggest, the, uh, the bigger beard. Yeah, balding. Uh, yeah, still has long beard. hair. He's the big burly ish, the more burly. Of the two? The two. I don't know what their Viking names are, but. Igor and Ivan was some shit. I think he's Ivar. Ivar, well, whatever. Uh, James, you get you brought up some of this stuff. What is it? You want me to bring it up? Yeah, so the first one's here uh, what AEW wrestling is like. Okay. Turn the volume down. <laughs> Off your right. <laughs> you have to watch it from the beginning. The yeah, that's that's about right. Yeah. <laughs> Got the second clip here of uh, Scotty Steiner. Second. Jason. Paul Tombstone, apologize someone at the cemetery, would you? Ah, oh, it's already been done. Okay. What we got young here? Buck here? Doing all the moves to the cemetery. Live left. Oh, this is a Steiner screwdriver. Hell yeah. Oh, he's dead. I don't see how he protects somebody on this thing. That's what Haas say too, right? He's... Boom. Ah. Imagine if he was pissed off with you that day. <laughs> Who the fuck is beating him? Good gun, Jason. You can do it. Hossie, man. He, uh... I mean, to be honest, I mean, doing it to Jason would be the, the best case scenario. Like, if you couldn't protect him, right. then yeah, you just right. shouldn't be in the ring at all. Mm. I worked a show at Hase. That's the guy he gave the move to. Um, that motherfucker is over. The... But he actually, uh, there was some controversy with that guy in the, in the dojo. He actually killed a young boy or some shit. Really? Yeah. Wasn't that like Kali's gimmick? Well, Kali killed a young boy too, but this was in Japan. Yeah. Do you Question think it's easier both... to, do you think you're to sweep that under the rug in America or in Japan? Probably in Japan. So you sweep it under the rug. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Question for crazy. both Paul and A. What was the Sandman like in WWE and US? Yo! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a story. You go ahead first, Paul. No, you go first. Okay. I've sold this one before, but I'll say it again. <laughs> so, Sandman, Sabu, ECW Originals, none of them have a license. Okay. They all have suspended driver's license. So, me, of course, the youngest Fake guy, guy. Form, I have to rent the cars. So, I rent a car. Me, Francine, Sabu, Sandman in this little compact car because I'm trying to pay for a mortgage on a house and work for ECW where you're making no money because they ain't drawing shit. <sighs> so I'm rooming with Sandman and this guy, like I smoke, but this guy chain smokes and we're in this little room and I can't breathe. So I, I say, fuck this, I'm going to go room with Sabu. So Sabu and Francine are sharing a room, but Sabu is on a different time clock. Like he's up all night and sleeps all day and he insists on having a hot tub, a hot tub room. So he gets in the hot tub and he stays awake. Really? All night. Yeah. He takes his medication and he sits in the hot tub. Now Francine, there's one bed. Francine is sleeping in a queen size bed. I said, sweetheart, do you mind? So I just, above the sheets she's under the sheets i'm above the sheets we share a bed the next day the next day the, the uh, housekeeping calls but sabu just fell asleep by the time we're supposed to check out and they call the room he answers and tells them to f off screams on the phone they call the cops so the cops show up and let's just say me and Friends, you know, trying to hurry up and get every paraphernalia out so we don't get arrested. Okay. And um, Sandman's doing the talking with the police officer. 
explaining the situation and he's a great talker he got us out of it but then i'm in the car and i'm fucking livid because you know i'm a foreigner if i get caught again because i had already got caught at this point for smiz if i get caught again that's it i'm fired and i get deported so i told him to smarten up and then he cut a promo on me and told me to pull over pull over i'm calling dreamer and uh, that's my son my story <laughs> Wait, what was the ending of that? He yelled at you and told you to pull over. He yelled at me because because I I got mad because like, dude, like they're calling the cops and like there's illegal substances and stuff and like I can't get caught with this shit, right? Because like we're working for WWE. Huh? <laughs> you nerd! I'm, I'm a I'm a I'm a foreigner, dude. I don't live in the United I'm States. I'm kidding. Right? Uh, Go back to your country. Cut- yeah, I'm joking. But um and then you know I'm trying to be the responsible adult here, even though I'm the youngest one, you know, tell them, hey, listen, guys, we're gonna get fired if this fucking, you know, the, this gets back to the office. And uh, you know, there are ECW originals. I think they lived it by a different code, you know. They're wild childs, they're you know, menace to society as I, I think. look here, pal. In the gray words of the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, America, love it or leave it. Well, I left, so here I am. <laughs> yeah. And I'm loving leaving it, as a hitman would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm loving leaving. Hold on a second. <laughs> Going to play hockey, just came to say hi, looking good, boys. Happy to see Jason in good health and the real mean machine, Paul motherfucking London. Well, thank you, Brandon. Appreciate yeah, it. Fucking you. Your face, Brandon. What's your Sandman story, dude? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's like lame now. No, first time I met Sam was at TNA in like 2001 or two, 2002. This is in Nashville. And, uh, I've never, I never, I never went to TNA in Orlando. I couldn't tell you anything about it because I never went. Um, the only TNA experiences I ever had were in Nashville. So, anyways, um, one of my trips there, uh, I don't quite remember how, but I ended up rooming with Sandman <laughs> at this like Days Inn or something. Uh, and I just remember he had like, uh, like he, you know, he smoked in the room and everything. And I, and I, at the time, I was like really clean. And he always had like a kid where he, he had like this big KFC bucket that he would like lay on the bed, like and have this bucket on his stomach, and he was just like eat KFC. Um, and so that was like the first time I ever met him. I was like, oh, this guy's, you know, he's really cool. So then, like years later, uh, WWE, um, he remembered me, and I mean, obviously, I remember him. And so we would ride occasionally together from time to time. There was one time in California that we were riding together and we were in Irvine, which is uh, an unincorporated city or or, corp- or whatever those fucking, you know, those cities that are like, no, not, not an unincorporated city. Well, I mean, still don't even know what the fuck that means. But we're driving around looking for our hotel and earlier in the day he was like hey kid you know about that trick where you you make a pipe out of tin foil you know yeah. and i'm like huh? you know? he's like yeah make a tin foil pipe let me show you how to do it and he showed me how to like make a pipe out of tin foil yeah. uh and like because then you can crush it you know you just crush the evidence and god you know i'm sitting there thinking like well unless they like open it up find it and open it up and there's like all this residue anyways uh but so then like funny enough later that night after the show, we're driving around Irvine, trying to find our hotel. I was driving, actually. I, I still feel really, pretty guilty. Uh, but I was driving, uh, and I ran, I ran over a kid. No, uh, and I uh, took a weird, like I took a rolling uh, right turn stop, and we got pulled over. Wow. And, of course, we were smoking, and they, they get us out of the car, and... Uh, Somehow, he had managed to step on and crush that pipe. Uh, so that was like not that was a non-factor. 
Um, and then he took the full rap for me. He was like, kid didn't have anything. It wasn't him. It was me. Da, da, da. Like wow. he paid like a fine. Um, and like, and he was like, nah, kid, if the office got wind of this, like you, we know you'd be gone. You know what I mean? And like, wow. so like he totally took the bullet. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, I, I love it. He's, he's so smart too. He's so smart. Like when the, uh, and I, I don't have the exact details, but when the winter Olympics were in like Salt Lake city or something last or whenever, like this is a long time ago, he, he knew the winter Olympics were coming to Salt Lake city. So he had like, I want to say he like, he owned like he, he he like owned like a construction company or or something where like he went out there and capitalized on the fact that the Olympics were coming to the Winter Olympics were coming to Salt Lake City and he ended up like making like a, a a nice chunk of change off of that you know and uh, I mean he's just like a really smart guy really smart guy you know yeah but um, I think he's he's like a magnet for cops because he got everywhere he goes he was well you. I mean. Depends. I mean, do, do do pigs not love to profile people? True. I mean, is that probably not what they learn on like first day of uh, police academy? I mean, like right. this is how you judge people, and you know these are the colors to look out for, and these are the you know this is the and look for this, and these these people are definitely bad. This is how you, judge people, and, you know these are the colors to look out. For. I can hear myself. Playback. Well, that's some bullshit. I just finished watching Wrestlers on Netflix. Great show, by the way. Renee, you're shown on the screen for a split second on episode. Yeah, I've seen that. Residuals? Yeah, sure. James? Yep. Checked out a little bit. <laughs> Was that right, James? Did Powers Booth, unfortunately, he passed away? Yeah, like seven years ago. Seven years ago. Jesus. Really? Yeah. Man, he was awesome. Got a sudden death, for that. A big sudden villain. Death. Sudden death. Team awesome. Stone. I'm gonna put spiders in your mouth. We got some videos here. What we got here, Jameson? You really know me all that well, do you? You know I'm the kind of guy. Just when you think you you know them a little bit, you find out you don't know a damn thing about them. He's promised on H12. Well, I'm willing to pay the price. You see, JR, I'm a, I'm a risk taker, a calculated risk taker. You can call me a bad guy. Did he have like a pimple in his eye or something? Or what the fuck is oh, that? It's a sty. No, it's like a sty. We need a pimple right here. That's what that is. That's from getting shit on his face. The old wife's I bet. I bet that's some guy having a like. A, I bet he plucked the hair or something, or he had some Botox or some weird shit done. And then he had a fucking like shit date that night, and then like he got in the pores, and like that's what. That, I bet you anything that's from shit on his face. <laughs> what is that a lie? No, you... sh Where's the no, lie? He, he shit on other he shit on other the... people's faces. Get your, get your story. Your story oh come straight. on! You don't think he wore a goddamn fucking. <laughs> Are you shitting me, dude? That's oh, probably his Halloween costume every year. It was fucking like, looked like his face was made of bark, right? And it was just covered in shit. Where's the lie? Where it's is well it? known for, he enjoys toilet humor. That is well known. Well, it's yeah. Fat and it's the most hilarious thing. Remember, he didn't know what a burrito was? <laughs> Nick Khan has been named in the WWE lawsuit. Yeah. Just in French. So, oh, speaking of French, oh, hey, did you see the fucking did, videos? Then, yeah, I did I hear knew. back. What? What's going on? From bro? I did hear back from our dear good friend, uh, Big Dick Johnson, and he wants to come on. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Messaged me right before I came on. Loves the show. Uh. And definitely wants to be on here. So I was like, because it's not technically, it's because it's, I mean, this is your show. So I was like, I need, you know, 
yes, we want you on. <laughs> it's not ultimately my decision. So yeah. I'm going to revert just like this. I'm going to let the gang know. Uh, okay. It's okay. We need guests. So, yeah. Chris <laughs> Joseph. <We're struggling. laughs> this oh, is amazing. Nick, Nick Johnson, everybody. Uh, well, okay. We'll give his contact to, uh, to me or James and, uh, yeah. No, I'm doing it myself. No, okay, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll come in along. It's shit in Vince's eye, <laughs> right? Pink eye, his eyes, thigh. That's that pimple right there. I had one uh, similar to it. It's a sty. Wait a minute. How did you get it? Isn't that the little snake from Hollywood that comes that has to go through your mind? And yeah, I asked the doctor like what causes it, and it's like MK Ultra. John, did you get shit on your face lately? Because that's the only way this happens. That's pink eye when you get shit in your eye. (laughs) Stephanie McMahon, Nick Kahn, Brad Bloom, Brian Nurse was named in today article in the Janelle case and covering up for Vince. And wow! What about Hunter? So if Stephanie McMahon knew and Nick Kahn knew Allegedly. Allegedly. Then you know the game. What kind of game are they playing here? Huh? Hunter is safe, guys. Hunter's not going anywhere. He's the toast of Greenwich. He's <laughs> untouchable. Yes. <Yeah. laughs> that big fucking nose of his. Okay. Paul. You tell me he didn't you- smell something funny around there? He could smell it all the way from Brazil. Brazil, why Brazil? Oh, by the way, Brazil, if you want to go to Brazil, check out Touristas. Highly recommended. Great film about tourism in Brazil. <laughs> well, well done. I'll, I'll watch the Simpsons episodes when I go to Brazil. No, watch Touristas first. Paul, can you go back out there and try to catch some famous ghosts? I am. I am. I'm gone from that cemetery. But Go back to the cemetery, Paul. Oh <laughs> yes. Go find my son Kane. You can find him there. Oh yes. 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 <laughs> I never tell you I met his brother like really early on. This is probably Oh fuck. I was sixteen, dude, when I met I met Marcel Pringle in Mobile, Alabama. And this is when I went to brother. Yeah, Marcel Pringle. He was a promoter in Alabama region. Oh, really? And uh, so I was in Florida at sixteen. I went out to Florida to train at uh, exotic, the late exotic Adrian Street's Skull Crushers, which was a total ripoff, right? A total ripoff. We just took all our money and used it on like eye surgery to get a sty off of his eye because he took shit on his face. Um. No, that's not. But he did use our money on eye surgery uh, and didn't teach us anything. But he would like pop in and just try to like sell us paintings that he did of like naked, like like Native Americans with like wolves in front of their dicks and stuff. It was weird. Um, and so we ended up having to like train ourselves and go to like local shows. So we ended up driving out to Mobile. We were in Pensacola, Florida, and we drove out to um, Mobile to go to this show. And that's actually where I first I met uh sensational sherry she was just absolutely lovely she's like so kind you know and i have a picture with her somewhere and then i also met stevie richards who was on that show and we took a picture together and like years 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 later uh i showed him that picture and he's just it it's still have that somewhere too but anyways so we tried to get and I remember I learned uh, or, like, there was this one guy in the card named Awesome Al Savage who had like Rick Rude tights, but he looked like um, uh, what's the uh, Indian uh, wrestler that came back recently that's not very good? Jinder Mahal. So, I like Jinder. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay. I mean, is he good? You'll I don't, the Jinder. <laughs> is he good? Um, no, you he's going to study him Exactly. So anyway, um, God, where was I going with this whole thing? It doesn't matter, actually. I'm, Never mind. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so I met this guy. So anyways, I remember years later, too, I remember mentioning to, to, to your boy, uh, Bob Holly, and he was like, did you say Awesome Al Savage? 
Fuck that motherfucker. You know what? That old man, he was looking at my old lady when I went to the gym. Don't think I forgot that. I'm going to rip his goddamn fucking throat out. You know it. You fucking know it. I was like, what? Well, I don't. I don't. I met him when I was sixteen. I'm not gonna deliver the message. I don't. Know. He's probably. I don't even know if he's alive. <laughs> anyway, but like, so, so then, uh, but then anyway, at the end of this whole thing. Oh, and then I remember like the guy, uh, Al, some Al Savage. He like, put me in a waist lock. We were like working out before the the marks got in the building, and uh, so he puts me in a waist lock. And he's like, "Reverse it. Let's see if you can reverse it." And I was like. And he had like this kind of like weak ass waist lock on me, right? With all this air and shit in it. So I just leaned over and grabbed his leg, which was right in between my legs. And I pulled it and he landed on his ass. And he goes, no, no, you would never do that. Uh Uh-uh, no. I was like, what? Like, I just did. Dumb fuck. Like, you, come on. So then at the end of that show, we didn't get to work or anything. We just watched it. Help break down the room. And then after the show, uh, they were like, hey, the promoter wants to meet you. And I was like, who, me? They were like, yeah, he wants to talk to you. I was like, all right. And uh, it was like, imagine uh, Paul Bear with just like regular hair, like brown hair. And uh, it was his brother who was like pretty tall, if I remember correctly. Of course, I was 16. So this guy looked like he was like 6'3". And his name was Marcel Pringle. And uh, he was like, how old are you? And I was like, well, 16. He was like, mm, 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 mm. yeah, you're going to be real good baby face. Real good baby face. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yep, you yep, be yep, a yep. real good baby face. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. All right. Yeah. You know, like at 16, you're like, you're not thinking like, I think this guy's going to like me. Um, oh, you're so- like. Oh, so what you're getting at? Yeah, he's like rubbing like, my shoulder. He's like, you're a real good baby face. Oh, real good. Oh, really? I, like, I think I have a shot. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, he was really nice. He didn't, you know, but like, yeah, oh, yeah. That's what yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my own case. So, he's really nice. I don't think I ever met Percy, though. Oh, no. What a great guy. So funny. Yeah, I hear nothing great things them. about him. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everyone loved him. They're so smart and witty and funny and yeah. Yeah. I thought he was, you know, a dude to do. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> he, loved his, he, he was with his soulmate. He loved his wife so much. Oh yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I think I think when she passed away, he passed away like a year later. It's like he couldn't live without her. <laughs> Is, is Jimmy Hart Jimmy Hart's still alive, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Should, I mean, reach out to him. I mean, talk about an icon who yeah, nobody totally. talks about. Right? I agree. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, like, literally yeah. one of the kindest souls I've ever met in my life. One of the sweetest men I've ever met in my life. Mm. And who never awesome. gets enough credit for awesome. I mean, just not even just his wrestling stuff. And you go all the way back to Memphis, all the stuff he was doing in Memphis, man. Like, oh my God. But like, then you, know you the just music think of musically. Yeah, musically. Yeah, right? He's amazing. What a legend. And You're right. You're all... What I'm going to do to you. All right. <laughs> if you only knew. James, do you want to read what that? Do it now, or do you want... What do you want to do, do James? Do it after. Huh? Do it after. After? Okay. After, after, after. Um, girls in cars. Well, I don't know, guys. Raw is coming on. You guys want to watch it? No, I have to go to an audition, but thank you. Oh, come on, you know, you want to watch Raw. Yeah, yeah I'll come the fuck off. Yeah, I'm cool. cool. Let's go, Raw. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, yeah, but uh, listen, I told you guys. That the news was going to hit, and it's happening now. You told us? Well, I was telling everybody that shit's going to come out in the next several weeks, and now it's coming out. You got Nick Khan, Stephanie, these other names that we don't know who they are, but we're well, going to start learning. Kevin Dunn's name named in the suit, right? Like, we're not forgetting about Bucky, right? Not yet, but why do you think he just fucking said sayonara all of a sudden? Get real. 
Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's not a coincidence that, you know. Well, it's away. beaver season. Huh? So he actually, he, it's beaver season. You so he needed to get on. Yeah. You gotta go build a dam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you ready for summer, man. Come on. Yeah. Uh, but the son in law, I mean, why isn't his name getting named? Is Stephanie, Nick Khan, he was the third guy hey, to vote hey, Vince hey. out. Why is his name not getting named? Hey, I'm because hey, there's rumor, hey, rumor has it that he has his own NDAs with some of the divas. Hey, what about our favorite? Hey, date, 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 date. <laughs> well, on the flip side, have they just completely ignored and like pretended like nothing ever happened with um Jericho? Well, um, Jericho was probably loving it because he got a free pass. Oh, well, Jericho liked the tweet. Fat. I hope people treat Vince the same way they accuse Jericho and like Jericho actually liked the tweet. Hmm. What about Brock? They, they put Brock back in the game now. so They put him back on the they roster. Yeah. They did? They put him back on the roster page. And apparently he was always on it. Well, no. Right now, fair. I just... Picture Brock's like in the wilderness somewhere. He's got like blood, like deer blood on his face. He's just like <laughs> pulls up like a like a dead carcass. He's just like, oh, <laughs> oh. telling a deer to pee. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, he crawls off into like a mountain somewhere. Yeah, he just, he just in the because he lives out in the fucking boonies, right in the middle of the nowhere in the woods. So, I don't know. What about Rena? How's she feeling? Right. Well, shit. Think about it. She sued Vince for sexual harassment in the nineties, right, for like a hundred some million. Then Brock goes and marries her. And now, well, she got hired back, and then he married her, right? Right. But when he hired, when Vince hired her back, look what he made her do. He's like his own personal fucking like mistress on TV. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was more sexualized than ever. What's the timeline on all that? Because I remember seeing like an interview with like Mark Merrow where he was talking about when he found out that she was with another guy. And he was like, right. I'm gonna beat that dude. I'm gonna be his fucking all right. Yeah, all right, he can have her. Right. <laughs> like he like, he like he out it. It. but I'm like, when did they ever when would they ever they were not in the same timeline ever? Must be two right? I mean, when... two thousand three. They were. Yeah. They were they, they, they was on SmackDown together. They actually had segments together. Two thousand and three. Really? Mero yeah, well, and Brock? Yeah. Rena, not Mark Mero. No, no, I'm talking about Mark though, right? No, yeah, Mark he was, was at home when he time. got those calls. He was, he, he was, what? she was working for the company, and he wasn't. So he was calling her and checking on her every night, and then uh, all of a sudden, right. okay. I was sure if it was him. like he was still in the like. Okay, I was like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, but why? Mark was also, by the way, if you want a really positive account to follow? Follow Mark Marrows, the dude of the saint. He's amazing. He is. Yeah, what an amazing, amazing guy. Touches so many lives. Oh my god! All those yeah, he, he does all the schools. He does so much for kids yeah. and teenagers. He does. He really touches these lives. These kids really look up to him. Like he's yeah. he's done amazing. If any if anyone would would get a uh, you know humanitarian award or you know I mean, a that's honor, award. yeah, that, these are the types of people you want to honor. Yeah, big and how associated really with amazing person. Right? Yeah, not these fucking scumbags that are, you know, their their careers are riddled in controversy. Like, that's what you want to fucking represent your company and your Hall of Fame is shit like that? Not, I've yeah, even I reached know. out to Mark Merrill with mental health issues, and even when I've had some really down times, I go to his sites to, and it cheers me up. Like, it, it just gives yeah. me a positive outlook again. It's like, he's really, he's so he helps a lot of people more than he knows, yeah. And he's like in his what, late fifties. He might even be early sixties. And I saw a video of him like a year or two ago, and he's doing 
shooting star presses off of like a boat dock into a wow. lake or something. Yeah, and he looks amazing. He looks amazing. He looks so yeah. good. He is a, he is oh, such an athlete. Agreed. Okay, He's hold a on a second. Athlete. I wanted to and say boxer. something. No, we are doing. Don't fight. And bodybuilder. Come on, get it on camera. Who's fighting? No. What's this, bro? You split those dogs up. Sit. Sit. Sit Lay dude. down. <laughs> You sound like Piper right there. Lay down, puppy! You better sit down! We're all on a bubble gum! Are they really fighting the dogs? That's Matilda over there. Take care of Matilda. Dynamite, what's going on with Matilda? I don't know what happened. We left her there. Paul's London's got to. Paul London, you better take care of Matilda. That's right. Take care of Matilda, Paul London. Please. <laughs> You've got to stay there. Oh, yeah. Is that Winston fighting with Matilda? <laughs> I was going to say something and I... Don't fight! Shit. Got a brain fart. All right. Press um, rewind. Yeah, man. Oh. See, that's what I'm talking about concussions, man. Like, you guys not hungry? I completely forgot what I wanted to say. Um, there you go. Speaking of rewind, I'm going to be on Jonah's show somewhere in the near future. So check out Rewind, Review, Recap on YouTube. Yes. Rewind, that's a great Recap, show. Rewind, re rewind, Recap, Review. You're right. Relive. So it, Relive. Uh, Stevie Rewind, told me. Mind recap, one, relive. Yes, please check Stevie out told me a story one time where there was a talent meeting in JR or someone said Weber's needed to model themselves after X Pac in China. Hmm. Who? Weber's son what? needed to model Weber's son? What the fuck Wrestlers, is that? maybe. You What's Weber's to... son? Let's see I, if I don't they'll know take what that means. I don't know what Weber's son is. He probably meant wrestlers, but they were role model. But I was working with them; they were people role models to look up to at the time. Hmm. We all have our ups and downs. Sure do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Show those dogs, damn it. Everyone. They're not everyone, dogs. Uh, everyone needed to model themselves after X Pac in China. Sure. Okay. What? Yeah. Um, yeah. Ubu. Sit, Ubu. There you go. Come on. Is that a stray dog? dog? Oh, it's a squirrel. Come on. That'll get him. Cafe de Rene gone into the wilderness, folks. Yeah. You're yeah, the real nature boy. Woo. <laughs> what the fuck's happening to this podcast? Huh? <laughs> Find Woody Woodpecker. I don't know, James. You're not bringing very much excitement here. Got in any time. <clears throat> well, want me to do it, James. I'll do it for you. I'm watching Scroll. I'm watching squirrels <laughs> on the podcast. You want me to do it? I'll do it for you, James. I'll put the other shit. They might be able to bring another trick to the pony. What's the your Liverpool accent, right? Is that Liverpool? That's all I got. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it's nine o'clock, and Paul is going squirrel hunting. And uh, I'm not uh, hunting any squirrels, man. I'm feeding them. Well, you're hunting to feed squirrels. You're hunting them down to feed them. Yeah. Man, uh, I can hear them watching me. Paul, I mean, everyone. Uh, Your friend. Miss, Great to see you, boys. Thanks yeah. for having me. Jason, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, get it, get it. Always um, a pleasure. Yeah, Paul, oh, look. 
Oh, Lee Cole ended his show and shouted this show out, so we came and subbed. Oh, thank you. That was that was what you meant by Lee sent me. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to, if you're there listening, we're going to try to reach out to uh, Lee Cole because I'd like to have him on here. I know he has a lot of information about uh, the 1990s scandals and stuff. And with his, Wrestling his with the devil. Yeah. So definitely we're going to reach out to him and definitely like to have him on here. Um, Where are you going? So we're going to leave Paul to uh, his squirrel the road. <laughs> Paul, it's always a pleasure. Uh, Jay. Oh, pleasure's all on this end of the table, guys. I yeah, am man. a Michael Bolton fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jay, just keep making uh, bewildered faces there. All right, buddy. I don't know where you are. But these are for you. We'll definitely be catching up on this uh, Nick Khan, uh, Vince McMahon story. There's more to come on that. We'll definitely be following that very closely. So stay, stick with the channel because we'll be updating very soon on that with our thoughts and opinions. Same cafe time, same cafe channel, Mary's Crackers. That's right. So if you're not uh, signed up to the Patreon, please do because that's where we, um, we tape all the stuff first before we air here on the channel. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and thank please, you. Uh, please, yeah, rewind, recap, relive with Jonah. Check that going? show out. I'll be on it soon. And uh, right. please check out my cameo at cameo.com slash Jason Sensation X. Thank you. Thank you very much. There we go. All right. Oh, great to see you, Paul. Love Don't you, man. Smile. Great thank to see you, James. Love everybody. Thank you. Great to see you, Renee.